We are live, ladies and gentlemen, and for the rest of the hour, as long as his cell phone holds out, he's over in Europe. Neil Fallon is the front man, lyricist, and occasional guitar player for the rock band Clutch, who's been around since 1991. Yeah, when I first heard, I don't know, five, six years ago, Escape from the Prison Planet, I was like, and then I went and found out what year it came out, and I'm saying, wow, these guys are really on the same page. I didn't come out with Prison Planet until 2002, so maybe that song influenced me somehow. Uh, and the band's been around for 15 years, and it's just uh, awesome, and he's with us. And, and you know, reading the lyrics, listening to the lyrics, I thought, these guys know all about the New World Order. They know all about what's going on. I said, we ought to get Neil Fallon of Clutch on, and we call him up to get him on, and it turns out that they are certainly aware of our work and so it's just really exciting to have uh, Neil Fallon on. Neil, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Hey, the pleasure's all mine, Alex. It's a, this is a blast. Good. For some of my listeners that may not know about Clutch, uh, who aren't, you know, kind of modern classic rock and roll fans, tell us about yourself. Tell us about what uh, influences you guys and what you're doing currently. Well, um, our star backstory is pretty typical of, you know, most rock bands. We went to high school together. And, you know, weren't particularly academic or athletic, so we said, hey, well, let's make rock and roll music for fun. And um, been doing that since uh band started in 91. And, uh, you know, it's great. You know, I get to jam with my, my best friends and go out on the road and play rock and roll music. And right now we're in Hamburg, Germany on tour. And uh, today was a wonderful day. Got to see the sun for the first time in about three weeks. <laughs> and uh, got another week left and then, then head home. And... Uh, Supporting a record now uh, called Strange Cousins from the West. And, uh, and that's basically the, the readers, super readers digest version of what's going on. Take that song, 50,000 Unstoppable Watts. You're talking about the information. What is that song about? Well, the, the literal kind of genesis of that song goes back to where we rehearse in uh, Frederick, Maryland. And in Frederick, Maryland, it's where the Fort Dietrich Army Base is. And they do a lot of chemical weapons research and, and storage there. And um, it's only a couple miles from where we work, so it's, you know, it's a pretty heavy presence. And um, coming back from practice and listening to the instrumental version of that song, I passed the bass, and I was going to the beer store. And there's a lot of ham radio antennas that I think probably go back to, like, civil defense in the Cold War. And that's where the, um, the chorus came from. Um, Anytime I write a song, I always kind of have a, a, a backstory that maybe won't be apparent in the lyrics themselves. But I think a lot of lyrics uh, kind of talk about maybe the, the individual feeling so, somewhat helpless or, or fed up with powers that seem to be uh, out of his or her control. Absolutely. And, uh, I think this, this, is, that's, this song is an, uh, an exception to that rule. Your political views, uh, I mean, break those down for us because, you know, the lyrics are really powerful. And, 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 I, and I was pleasantly surprised to find out you guys occasionally listen to the show when you're out cruising around on the tour bus. Yeah, we, um, there was a pretty, when we were, particularly when we were in the van, <clears throat> excuse me, Tim, our guitar player, would download the, uh, the podcast and we would listen to it because you got plenty of time to kill. So, uh, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a good thing. So um, politically, you know, I consider myself a moderate, and I know in the U.S. that's not a popular thing because it, it kind of implies that you can't make up your mind or you're intellectually lazy. But I, the extremes to me, whether it's extreme left or extreme right, is just it's just an easy way to think. And it's a lot harder to kind of sift through everything and create your own opinion. No, I totally and, agree with you. I totally, I mean, uh, I call that shattering a left right paradigm that the whole left right thing becomes the entire universe of debate instead of, hey, I, I'm not looking at this entire system that you've laid out in front of me. I want something more. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I, yes, I think so. It's, um, it doesn't really matter to me who's. In, in, in the Oval Office or who controls the Senate or, or the House. It's, you're, you're given a binary system of thinking and, and it really, it disturbs me to hear the rhetoric that's going on in the country today 
to uh, you know you're you're a socialist or you're a capitalist is is dumbing it down so much that the the public the mob is turning on itself absolutely and the popul the, the the elite are laughing all the way at the bank because they're not getting looked at so yeah, i i really i really you know the new world order to me is a lot like voodoo it it, it gets its power from a belief in it and these people are just people. They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like you and me. And um, I, th I think sometimes the lyrics can reflect um, a paranoia, but I think it's important to be able to turn paranoia on and off. Because when you become a slave to it, then rational thought goes out the window. Um, well, I agree with you that the controllers... Just like our last guest was talking about, government buildings are these big, imposing structures. You've got to go up the steps. They're built like castles against the people. You know, when they play hell to the chief, they point their cannon at you. It's all about they're the authority. They're invincible. They're gods. But you actually look at a G20 meeting of these bankers. They're a bunch of pot-bellied demons. They're not invincible. And if we discover that they're not invincible and come together as the people, instead of being turned against each other, if we come together as black, white, Hispanic, old, young, you know, and stop fighting with each other and start talking about liberty versus tyranny, we're going to win this thing. It is. Well, I think it's... It's so emotional. It's 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 easy to get caught up in it. And when I when I talk about it in, in this kind of context, this conversation that we we're having, I try to divorce myself from the emotions as much as I can, because once you start getting red in the face, then then reason and, and rationality go out the window. And as you know, this subject is pretty nebulous. There's a lot of people with ulterior motives. You know, one minute you could be talking about. Um, Something like, for example, the melting point of steel, and then two, two, three sentences later, that same person is trying to tell you that N Nicole Kidman is a, a reptilian overlord. <laughs> and it, it's it's a it's a very it's a minefield. There's a lot of disinformation. There's a lot of uh, just cookiness out there. But and sometimes you want to throw your hands up and say, "God, just I'll put my head in the sand and move out to the desert." Um, but that's really not an option, is it? Wow, that's a heavy point to make because. I try to stick to what I can prove, and I've seen the mainline system, when they do cover conspiracy issues on TV or radio, they like to mix chubacabras, space aliens, things that can't be proven but are interesting, in with the private Federal Reserve. And so it's easy to just like sports or like women or partying and the whole world's designed to make you not want to look into reality because the full spectrum of reality is a lot more confusing and wild and a minefield, as you said, than just the tiny spectrum of leave it to beaver and America's all fine and everything's dandy. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing is ever easy. Nothing's simple. It's always more complicated. We live in a world where it uh, let's go like going back to the idea of socialism, and capitalism. Those are European 19th century socioeconomic theories that I don't think in the way that we understand them are applicable today because it, the world is changing so quickly. It, you, it, you, once you define something, it's changed. And it, it's kind of like, like, like trying to gr gr grasp the water. And it's... Um, you know, like going back to what I said, it, it disturbs me to see people kind of cashing in on keeping people busy thinking that way. And, you know, when you say chupacabras and space aliens, I always talk about that in, in songs because it's great material. Uh, you know, these are characters of our, our myth-making process as we live. But at the same time, I think there's a seriousness to it. Um, sarcasm and humor is a great weapon. And bullies don't like to be made fun of. So, uh, I, uh, you know, I don't see myself as an expert in any subject. I just have a lot of questions and no answers. Sure. And, I mean, we have David Icon in people because I believe David really believes what he's saying. And, and we do have a little bit of that as well because we want to just get people thinking for themselves and realizing there's a bigger world out there, that there's more happening than what you just see on television or what your neighbors are doing. I mean, we're on a planet hurtling through deep space, and 
I think if people just rediscover the magic of life, the wonderment, uh, that, that, that they'll stop letting Madison Avenue make them feel empty so Madison Avenue can then dump in their false template of control. This is true. I mean, I think it, in rock and roll, I mean, you know, it's, it's theater. And I think that the, all the world is a stage is, is an awesome analogy or, or, or parable, if you will, um, that it's, it's e the easiest thing to do is to shock people. It, it bands make a living doing that sometimes. The easiest thing to do is to scare people. 